Thanks. Thank you. How's everybody doing? All right, I'd like to take you back just for a moment to the time when you were a child. Just think back to that time. And specifically, what I want you to think about, get in your head, is that amazing perspective, that belief that anything you wanted to accomplish in the world, you could, no matter what it was. Just get that amazing, unconstrained perspective in your head for just a second. Weren't we so naive? I mean, didn't you have this, this belief you actually might control the outcome of your life? I mean, I certainly had this. Now, I don't know why I had it, why I had such confidence. I mean, maybe it was the fact that I was born into a world of wealth and privilege. This is my childhood estate. Um, that's my room there on the west wing, top bunk. Or maybe it was my, my looks. From my earliest memories, I just knew that my looks were special. Okay, so I wasn't a very good-looking kid. In fact, my dad used to tell everybody that I was so ugly as a kid, they had to sit me in the corner and feed me with a slingshot. Now, unfortunately, I grew out of that <clears throat> look. What? Oh. Um, well, or maybe the reason I was so confident was because of my family. I remember going to my uncle's house, and there was just this incredible feeling of creativity that at any moment something electric could happen. Well, whatever the reason, I really did have this confidence, this belief that the point of my life was to find my place in it, to do something great and positive, to live life to its greatest potential. Now, I didn't know where or when this might happen in my work, my company, my family, my community. Maybe I'd lead dozens of people or thousands, hundreds of people, or maybe I'd have a positive impact on individuals, one person at a time. But from the get-go, I always knew that I was unique, and I had to find some way to exploit that uniqueness. And I bet most of you, I can't speak for all of you, but I bet most of you at some point had that same feeling, that the purpose of your life was to do something great and positive, to lead others towards something great and positive, to live life to its greatest potential. But then somewhere along the way, we start to lose that confidence. We start to ratchet back our expectations. We settle for a house that may not be exactly right, for a job that doesn't leverage our strengths and our passions, and for a level of impact in our companies and our communities that if we were being completely honest with ourselves, we knew was below our potential. In a word, we rationalize. We say to ourselves, it's okay to be okay. But we also know this is baloney at times, that we create the greatness of our potential right here in our heads, and we create the limitations, the barriers to that potential in exactly the same place. So it's okay to rationalize. But what I'm really interested in is what are the real limits of your potential? What are the limits of the potential of those you lead? So what I'd like it to invite you to do during our brief time together is to openly, honestly explore the real potential in yourself, in your contribution, in your significance, in your excellence, the real potential that exists in those, the real potential that exists in those that you lead. One, because if you help others achieve their potential, they will pay you back ten times over. Two, because you will make your greatest contribution to those you lead and to those you serve if you take ownership over your own potential. And three, because we all win. You, your company, your community, your church, your family, we all win if you do. Now, I'm not saying I'm any different than, uh, than the rest of you. You may not even remember when you began to rationalize in your life, but I remember the exact day. In fact, I have proof. When I was only, when I was only eight years old at the hands of a teacher, um, I was graded. <coughs> That's right, I was graded. And it's worse than that. Because right there on that first test was a B, mocking me. That's when I knew it was over. Sure, I took, there were more Bs that followed. I took my B average all the way through high school. And then I got into college and I thought, wait, a blank slate. Now's my chance to really excel. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm going to focus 100% of my time and attention on my grades. There is nothing that is going to distract me. Okay, so there were some distractions, but despite that, I was able to graduate in the top 80% of my class. <laughs> then I entered the workforce, and I thought to myself, great, a clean slate, now's my chance to start over. I'm really going to excel. 
But as I got one year, two years, five years into my career, I started to run into those same frustrations, right? I had some success. I was making okay money. I got promoted. My mom was certainly proud of me. But if you fast forward 15 years, you can, you can break my resume down into four words. Quit laid off, quit laid off. And this is how I celebrated my 37th birthday. I was out of work. I was really low, really frustrated. And it wasn't because I was in between jobs. I knew I'd find work. But for the first time in my life, I'd wake up, I'd look in the mirror, and the face looking back at me was saying, is this it? Seriously? This is your contribution? 